Hi, I'm Dr. Malescu, and we're here in AMP1, week three, uh, lab, anatomy lab, and I'm here to just go over the cell model, uh, going over all the parts, the cell parts called organelles. Um, the cell model and the cell parts will be on your practical, so I'm going to go over each uh, individual organelle structure and function, basically each one what their function is. All right, so I'm really close by the camera so that you can see everything. I'm going to move out of the way. This is the cell, and this will be the cell model that you will have on your practical. Um, as you can see on the board over there, I wrote down the functions. You probably can't see on this video, but I also sent you a photo. Um, basically, the definitions and the functions of all the organelles. So here we go, let's begin. The first thing that you see in the center here, this whole structure here is called a nucleus. Okay, the nucleus is the center where um, you have your DNA, your genetic code. Your DNA is wrapped up in these proteins called histones. And so when it's wrapped up with the protein, it's called chromatin. And so all this thready red material here represents, um, obviously here it's just thread, but it's supposed to represent the chromatin, which is the DNA code, okay? So um, each and every nucleotide sequence of three is equal to one codon, which is one expression of a gene, all right? So all of that is inside the nucleus. The space inside the nucleus is called the nucleoplasm, nucleoplasm. And the thready structures here, if we point to it on the practical, that would be the chromatin. Now, you're probably asking what this is inside in here. So that's called the nucleolus, not to be confused with the whole structure called the nucleus. So nucleus, nucleolus. The nucleolus is the site where ribosomes are synthesized. So this is where we make the ribosomes, which will be assisting in the development of proteins called protein synthesis process. Uh, it comes in two phases, which we're gonna go over in another video. Transcription takes place inside here where there is a structure called the messenger RNA, which is very sim similar to the DNA, will come in and read the code on the DNA. But the DNA is a double helix and it will have to unravel so that the mRNA will read it. So more to come on that, but right now we're just going over structures. So here we go. To review one more time, this is the nucleus, this is the nucleolus. The nucleus carries the genetic information in the form of chromatin, which is your DNA wrapped up in proteins called histone. In here are the nucleoli, so the nucleolus is the site of uh, ribosome synthesis. Now you're probably asking, what are these little tiny pores around? Well, these tiny pores, they're called nuclear pores. It allows the messenger RNA to get out of the nucleus and into the cytoplasm, which is the space inside the cell. And this is where the second part of protein synthesis takes place. And you'll see here structures where the mRNA, messenger RNA, is attached to the ribosome and translation is taking place. As the ribosome is attached to the messenger RNA, we're making proteins. More to come on that when we discuss protein synthesis. All right, so, so far we learned all of that. The nucleus has a double membrane, okay, and it's called a nuclear envelope. So you can see here, it's a double membrane, nuclear envelope. Nuclear pores, nuclear envelope, nucleoli. Nucleoplasm is the space inside the nucleus housing the chromatin. Okay, we move on away from that, and I want you to be able to identify the ribosomes that are attached to a transport system here. The transport system is called the endoplasmic reticulum. We have two types of endoplasmic reticulum. The endoplasmic reticulum with the ribosomes attached, which you can see right here, all the little tiny ribosomes, they look like little tiny balls, little tiny red balls. Um, these ribosomes are going to also assist in protein synthesis at the endoplasmic reticulum. So what's the purpose of the rough endoplasmic reticulum? 
basically it's studded with ribosomes and it's the site of protein synthesis. Now, we talked about rough endoplasmic reticulum with the ribosomes attached. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum you'll find in the periphery here. And so the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, as you can see here, does not have ribosomes. What is the purpose of smooth endoplasmic reticulum? Uh, it has a few. First of all, it's the site of steroid and lipid synthesis where we make uh, fats, okay, fats or lipids, and of course steroids. Um, also, it is the site of drug detox as well as EDOH, alcohol. So someone who is an alcoholic is going to have more smooth endoplasmic reticulum in all of uh, the cells, including especially the liver cells and the kidney. Uh, what else did I want to mention? Um, no, excuse me. The liver and the kidney is filled with peroxisomes, which we're going to go over in a minute. Um, so again, to review, um, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is the site of lipid synthesis. Um, also the site of steroid synthesis and lipid metabolism, which means breaking down lipids and like I said, drug detox and alcohol. Moving on, once we make the proteins um, from here coming into the rough endoplasmic reticulum, um, the proteins are a chain of amino acids, okay? They need to be uh, folded up four ways, quaternary, and so the job of that is literally the one goal in life for the Golgi apparatus is to do one thing. The job of the Golgi apparatus is to package the protein. So the protein that's made out here in the rough endoplasmic reticulum is folded up and packaged in the Golgi apparatus. Think of the Golgi app apparatus as FedEx or UPS where we're packaging and ready for delivery. So packaging and delivery of proteins. Delivery where? Well, we're gonna have these little tiny uh, vesicles as you can see here. And um, the Golgi vesicles carry the proteins that are either going to be used by the cell, but in this case you can see here, it's going to depart and leave the cell by fusing with the cell membrane and basically the cell membrane will spit it out via what the process is called exocytosis. All right, so, so far we went over quite a few structures, organelles. We went over the nucleus, the nucleolus, okay? We went over the rough endoplasmic reticulum. We went over the smooth endoplasmic reticulum which is the site of steroid and lipid synthesis and metabolism, drug detox and alcohol. And we went over the Golgi apparatus, packaging and delivery of proteins. We went over the Golgi um, vesicles, which are gonna carry the proteins and depart the cell membrane via the process of active transport going against the concentration gradient using ATP to uh, leave, okay? Um, via fusion with the cell membrane. All right, we move on to the suicide cells, which we call lysosomes. All right, so the lysosomes, uh, we can see right here, these little ra uh, round brown balls representing the lysosomes on this cell model here. So um, you also, when you come to lab, you will see that um, you have the answer key here um, so you can identify the numbers okay with the structures in case this video is not clear enough for you so number 13 here this brown circular structure um, as i said is the suicide sac as i like to call it it's it's called the lysosome why is it called the suicide sac well because it hydrolyzes and digests worn out cell parts so for example if you no longer need parts of the cell that are old it's basically um, Think of it as a garbage disposal and it's going to digest everything away. So those are important to have around the cell. Next is peroxisomes. Um, peroxisomes are basically going to be very similar to uh, lysosomes, but peroxisomes specifically are sacs that contain enzymes and these enzymes will detox um, the alcohol that you ingest 
as well as getting rid of free radicals in a cell which um, are known to uh, cause cancer. And the correction that I made is that um, the liver and the kidney cells contains lots of peroxisomes. So don't confuse peroxisomes with what I talked about, the smooth ER with um, breaking down detox of drugs and EDOH. Um, what else was I going to mention? The yellow structures here are just fat vacuoles. So if we put a sticker on here, don't confuse it and please don't identify it as a peroxisome or a lysosome. These are just fat vacuoles. Um, typically in the body, the fat is like a yellowish, creamy yellow, kind of like a pudding color. All right, so that's that. Moving on, uh, the most important um, structure here that keeps the cell going is the powerhouse of the cell and we call it the mitochondria. So as we... Um, work out more, we build more uh, mitochondria, mitochondria is needed. Um, these are the structures here. The inside of the mitochondria have these little infoldings called the cristae, and this is where adenosine triphosphate is made, ATP. So ATP is made, and that's what energy is for the cell. So it's, think of it as a fuel for the cell. So that's the mitochondria. Next, you can see here uh, the centrioles. Um, so these are structures that will help move the spindle when the cell divides. Um, and then over here, you can see these little strings with uh, ribosomes. These represent the amino acid chains with um, the messenger RNA and the ribosome. So this is where translation is taking place, where the ribosome attached to the messenger RNA, and it's translating the code so that we can form a polypeptide chain, which develops into a protein. And where's the protein going? Well, the polypeptide chain goes to the Golgi apparatus to be packaged and delivered. And then guess who delivers it outside of the cell? These Golgi synaptic vesicles, uh, these Golgi uh, vesicles. All right, so um, I can't think of anything else other than the fact that you can't see on this model, but we do have these bridgeways and cytoskeletal elements that um, uh, allow the uh, organelles to move and the spindle forms when we talk about the cell cycle. All right, so that's it. See you in lab. Please review this on your own. Uh, you will get this on the practical. All right, see you in lab. Bye.